Hello, hello, hello. I'm just here to do a really, well, it won't really be quick, but a tutorial on how to run and administrate and not really uh, play because I'll do a separate rules video. But uh, ship battles, ship battles, ship battles. So I will start by warping to our second ship battles arena, which is nice and clear. First thing I'm going to go ahead and do is load two ships. I'll load the pirate ship. And I'll load the ironclad flip. And I'm getting talked to, so I'll do my best to uh, pay attention here and pay attention to what other people are saying. Alright, so what we've got here is these two ships lined up next to each other. And you can imagine this being what they would look like straight fresh out of the box downloaded from Planet Minecraft. Uh, you downloaded the schematics and then you used MC Edit or some program to go ahead and paste them in. MC Edit I think is the, the program that we use. So you've pasted these two ships in, and they're roughly 35 blocks apart from each other. And what you're going to do is use World Edit, take your wand, and cuboid the ships. I'll grab the compass to make this faster. You are going to cuboid the ships by selecting the two glass blocks at either opposite corner and then you are going to go back to this block now this I should elaborate on this block a little bit before I go ahead and do this this block is placed here it is the block that you want to base everything that you do off of basically it's the static position because everything in world that it is based off of position uh, based off of where you copy it from. This is the static position that you will want to save all your ships from. It doesn't matter where it is. It could be here. It could be way down here. It could be right here if you really wanted it to be. All that matters is that it's in a constant spot and every ship is saved from the same place. So ours is here obviously. I'll stand on top of this with the ship cuboided, do a copy, do a schematic, save, MCE, ironclad, flip. Now we like to be very constant. All the ships are on the right side from the block. All the ship flips are on the left side. So that's the ship flip, ship flip there on the left. Hopefully you know left and right. That would be crazy if you didn't. Uh, then you go ahead and do the same thing with this other ship. And save it from here. Uh, you want to do this every time you get a new ship. Put it in MC Edit. And then save it as a world edit schematic from that single paste block. Uh, we actually even have this paste block saved because people like to be uh, be funny and destroy the paste block we have it saved from somewhere off on the shoreline we can paste that back into because if you don't know where this is and it's gone and you put it in you know and you put it in say here where that block is and then you paste ships from here all of a sudden your ships are like over three and two submerged underwater and you have a huge problem so that's always fun <clears throat> uh, so what you go ahead and do there after this is all set up this is basically a setup and you can go ahead and play if you really want to well I don't know why you would really why I said it like that of course you want to play that's why you downloaded them so how you're going to go ahead and go about playing uh, you select teams and prior to this the teams would have selected ships so you would you know pick team captains or something 
and uh, the team captains would go ahead and pick the rest of their teams and then the teams would individually decide on what ships they want and set them up against each other so now that the teams are on their ships like I am everybody's going to do a clear minus A get everything out of their inventory game mode uh, Viking that's me zero to set me into survival and hey look it's that guy and uh, I'm going to do a kit pirate this is the starter set for a tutorial I actually even told him I was making a tutorial earlier uh, this is the starter set that we use for all of our ships so every player gets this in addition to what is on their ship chests. It consists of infinite TNT. It's not just one, it's infinite. Only 15 arrows, a bow, golden apple. Uh, pirate pants, because all pirates wear leather pants. That's just something you know. Ten signs, a wooden sword, and a potion of instant health too. What are the signs for? The signs actually serve no purpose in the battle itself. They're merely for planning. Uh, in case you don't have a separate Skype call set up and you don't have any kind of team chat and you're on a team that's too big for just private messaging, you can go ahead and make you know, uh, signs that tell people, your teammates, what you're planning on doing. So I would say something like, I'll take these three guns and sign my name so they know who I am. And then maybe someone will be over here and they'll, they'll say, I'll board right away. And you know that you're going to have to cover them. So basically, your team just goes and puts out what they're planning to do. Again, optional if you have Skype or some other way of communicating. That's much more efficient, but this allows everyone to do it. So after you've planned and everything, or while you're planning, you rifle through these chests, take some of the equipment that's provided. You know, most most chests provide extra arrows, different boats and ladders for boarding, some food supply, these redstone kits for repairing your guns if they get blown up. And at that point, you're ready to play. The starting position is within five blocks of a chest usually you just stand right on top of them for protocol and you agree on a way with which you will start so you could have somebody just yell go uh, you could do it on the heel so a heel global so everybody playing is healed that's pretty nice to do even if that's not your uh, your starting signal you usually want to do a heal in case people have been sprinting and jumping and worn down their hunger or fell off something and got hurt. Just a nice way for everybody to start evenly. Uh, what we usually do is time night as soon as it gets dark. You start playing so it's dark now. I sprint out, start loading my guns, and we've begun. Play just continues. Ooh, that was a good hit straight off the bat. Play just continues until one entire team is eradicated. Uh, I I will make a separate video about rules. There's lots of ways to play, but we do have our own quote official unquote way of playing that works pretty well. So that's pretty much it for the setup. Now that the game's over and the ships are hopefully blown to pieces, you're going to want somebody to go back into game mode 1 and clear this. Now there's two ways to go ahead and do this. I will show you the long way and the short way because they both come in handy. So the simplest way since I just set these up and I haven't logged off since then 
and it was me who set them up. I can do an undo two and turn away because a lot of times the new lighting that has to come up is uh, too much for machines and it kills you. But there the water is all nice and flat. Everything's ready for a new game. Um, what the uh, the longer way? Like, oh, that was weird. The longer way is schematic load pirate ship based medic load castle ship flip. Turns out schematic format null just means you spelled it wrong. That confused me at first. Uh, paste this one in. Now when you'll see this is when someone doesn't clear the arena after they finish playing. The ships are still here and you don't know who did it. You have to go about doing this the long way. And it's annoying. But you go ahead and cuboid the ships. You gotta do them individually. Go ahead and do a set zero. Might actually be a way to make it not individually. I'll have to look into that. Maybe if you standardize where you put them up, there's a sale rendering. It's not even rendered yet, and I'm already clearing it. That's sad. But set zero again. Now what we're stuck with is these giant gaping holes in the water. Everything's cleared. Go back here to the shoreline onto the level you want the water to be is important. And do a fixed water radius 150 usually works for me. And everything is nice and cleared up. Just a really quick note on arenas. Um We've got two that we run off of here. We've got this one, which is nice and new and thematic. I'm going to cough again, so watch out. Uh, it's Yeah, it's got nice scenic views and everything. The only problem that could uh, be associated with it is the potential for people to leave the play field. But as long as you, you know, are kind of clear that you should stay near the ships and not go too far, it works out pretty well. And we've got this second arena here that's much more enclosed. It's our original arena. We've got some ships set up here already. Uh, yeah, much more enclosed. So people actually can't leave the play zone. We've got some better viewing areas underneath and around. Uh, it's kind of been beat up over a couple of battles, but... Once again, this bedrock block is saved in the exact same spot as in the other arena. So I can load and paste the same ships in the same places and nothing will go wrong. We've got this second fixed water block here because there's not a natural shoreline. This is at the level I need to be to do my fixed water after I clear boats. Uh, but pretty much you can build any arena you want there's not a, an arena that we've avail or made available for download because it's really your creative preference if you wanted you could just world edit a giant uh, box of water and put boats in it and that would work just as well we just make fancy arenas because they look cool but uh, that's all I can think of to talk about administrative wise. I'm sure I forgot something. If I did, I'll include it in another video. Adios.